So the empower results are really important because they suggest that the combination of uh, chemotherapy plus uh, angiogenics plus immunotherapy are uh, uh, important and uh, uh, we have the results only on the progression-free survival. Uh, so this is an important piece of information, but uh, the combination of carbotaxel plus bevacizumab is not very used in Europe compared to US, for example because in Europe, uh, in general, people prefer to use the combination of cisplatin pemetrexed because, for example, you have less alopecia, sometimes you have less side effects, and sometimes it, it is not always easy to use uh, bevacizumab in the metastatic setting. But anyway, there is a strong rationale to combine chemotherapy, but also the antiangiogenetics to promote the penetration of the T cells into the tumor for allowing the use of immunotherapy. So uh, from the rationale is an important piece of knowledge because we know that the adding uh, the antiangiogenics plus uh, chemotherapy to uh, the atezolizumab works. And uh, this is important because we know that antiangiogenics can enhance the penetration of the T cells in the tumor. And with the chemotherapy, you can uh, promote the uh, immunogenic death that can be synergistic with immunotherapy. I don't know in the scenario in Europe where carbotaxel plus bevacizumab is not the most common used regimen, if this will become the standard of care or it will become the standard of care, something like the combination, for example, of cisplatin, pemetrexed, pembrolizumab that will come soon in the next congresses. Um, I think that again the toxicity profile uh, will be uh, important to make the decisions for the patient, also because uh, all the regimens uh, have a very different uh, uh, toxicity profile. The field of advanced disease is now characterized by uh, several, uh, I would say even a very large number of trials trying to question frontline therapy. What to do when your patient is naive, never received any treatment, and trying to have immunotherapy being part of this game. Uh, Empower is a trial interestingly addressing a complex combination of drugs. Uh, as compared to the U.S. regimen. The U.S. regimen, there are many, but one of the classical one is paclitaxel, carboplatin, and bevacizumab, based on a, an important randomized trial in the past. So this is a skeleton, the standard of care, chemo plus bevacizumab. And this trial is evaluating chemo plus immunotherapy, an anti-PD-1, atezolizumab, versus the skeleton, or even more complex, chemo plus atezolizumab plus bevacizumab for drug versus the skeleton standard of care. And during this meeting, uh, we were able to see the results of the main endpoint of the trial is to have the four drugs being compared to the standard of care. The intermediate one without the bevacizumab is only to read if all the other endpoints come positive for the four drugs, um, so PFS and OS. And only if PFS and OS of the four drugs is positive, then the uh, atezolizumab chemotherapy will be compared to the standard of care chemo bevacizumab. So to Today, we can only speak about uh, the four drugs versus the chemo bevacizumab standard, okay? Uh, the rationale to do so is not just adding drugs. It could like look like having lots of drugs together, right? But the rationale exists since the 90s. Since the 90s, it has been shown that this VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, is impacting the immune system. When you have lots of VEGF, the T cells are made uh, are not trafficking well to the tumor. The, their trafficking into the tumor is inefficient, so they cannot reach the tumor site. It has also been shown that VHGF per se, as being in the blood, is in inhibiting the T cell function, is inhibiting the presentation by dendritic cells of some antigens to the immune system. So many steps of the immune activation are blocked by VHGF. So it makes sense when you give immunotherapy to also give an VHGF blocker which is bevacizumab. Uh, 
So biology kids a very good model and has a very, very strong rational, not very strong rational. So that was the question of empower. If you give four drugs, bevacizumab, atezolizumab plus chemo, is it better than giving chemo plus bevacizumab? In terms of PFS, later next year in terms of OS, and if everything is positive, without bevacizumab. But that's where we are. So at this meeting, we could see the PFS of four drugs versus uh, the standard of care. And to make a long story short, PFS is statistically significantly improved. Uh, like with immunotherapy, it's not so much the median PFS, which is interesting, but it's to see the curve separating over time more and more. We call it non-proportional hazard ratio. The benefit is growing over time, seeing that the curve separates to a point that at one year, you will double the number of patients that are without relapse when you uh, add the atezolizumab and bevacizumab, uh, when you add the atezolizumab to the regimen as compared to the chemo bevacizumab. So it's a very interesting uh, improvement in terms of preventing the progression of the disease. Um, the main question of Empower is to know if you have to give four drugs as frontline treatment, how are you going to impact overall survival? because it means you decide not to sequence so much, you give everything in the same time. The second thing is, um, are there subgroups of patients who benefit more from the strategy? And we could see this subgroup, at least broken down by PDL1 in the trial. Uh, they also had a surrogate signature for PDL1, but let's say broken down by PDL1. And you can see that basically, this looks like to be pretty independent of, on, of PDL1. Uh, with the, the benefit is observed across various categories of PDL1 expression. The weaker is probably the PDL1 negative. They still had a significant hazard ratio, but what we find in the community a little bit marginal, it was a hazard ratio of 0 0.77. So it's just at the limit of what we would consider. I won't, don't want to make a conclusion out of it, but I just say due to this non-proportional hazard ratio, we have to wait a little bit more to see if the separation the difference becomes bigger, and what about survival? So for this negative PDL1, let's wait a little bit more. For the very strong PDL1, we know we have pembrolizumab, and the results in terms of PFS are more or less the same. So again, we have to wait a little bit more, see the overall survival, but maybe in very high PDL1, one drug, pembrolizumab, might be preferred to four drugs, right? for cost, but also for toxicity, for quality of life. So this is maybe the niche where pembrolizumab might stay as being the standard. So you have all these patients in between, 49% of PDL1 up to 1% of PDL1, where really Empower is showing that it's a new potential option, treatment option in these patients, being better than chemotherapy and should be considered in that setting. And for the other two extremes, we need more data and, and, and more time to see the results. I think we have to start to to think the landscape of frontline immunotherapy. Because after Empower, there are many trials to come next year. And the complexity is just the beginning because we will have so many different results coming from the trials that we have to start to know what we want to adopt or not. Same thing for the regulatory authorities. They have to know what they are going to accept and based on which standpoint. And for Empower, it remains a mystery. Are they going to potentially make it available, maybe in the US already, based on PFS or not? But what I would say is, if I were now in Europe and I had access, because my authority has given, given me access to Atizo, Bevacizumab, and Chemo, I would use it in this category of patients between 1% of PDL1 and 49% of PDL1 because it's better in terms of PFS and because the shape of the curve showing you the potential for a long term benefit is something which is unprecedented in non-small cell lung cancer. So if you have the opportunity to act on it, you probably should do it. And keep in mind, in lung cancer, you're never sure that you will have a second line, a third line, a fourth line, because these patients die from the disease under chemotherapy. So if you have the opportunity to test the opportunity or to test the strategy of immunotherapy, because you are reimbursed, you have the right to do it, and you have a positive trial, you should do it frontline.